is Thomas Frank, everyone. Give him a big round of applause. Yeah. Peter, we're going up. We're going to the Premier League. <laughs> Went out there, destroyed Bournemouth for five minutes, <laughs> then they scored. <laughs> I'll do everything I can, you know, I, I kiss and hugging with Ray and then show on by then. <laughs> Welcome to the post-match pint with London Pride. We're here to celebrate an unbelievable season and joining myself, Natalie and Reese, is Thomas Frank, everyone. Give him a big round of applause. Cheers, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Cheers. Cheers. Thomas. Maybe reference, there are people here. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, if you heard a lot of noise, we have got people in the room with us. Um, <laughs> staff from Great West Road. Um, look, we'll get onto the season and what an amazing achievement it's been this year, but as it is the post-match pint. Um, if there was a Premier League manager you could go for a, a little summer pint with, maybe on the balcony here at one over the eight, who would it be? Uh, because it's just been this season, I have to mention Dean Smith because yes. he's a personal friend and he's a fantastic uh, guy to be around. So I, I need to choose him, uh, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who would you guys go for? Ooh. Uh, Thomas Frank. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's quite> <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm taking it off. So corporate with that. Yeah, yeah. That's um, right. Um, I I'd go Jurgen Klopp or Thomas, obviously. Um, right, let's talk about. It's not just been this season, Thomas, has it? It's been a remarkable, what, just under two years, and we've come a long way in a short space of time, haven't we? Yeah, it's a um, crazy journey. Um, most of you guys have ex experienced it as well as, as, as me. Uh, I think from where really, that was a personal, you know, from going into that bad run of games where I first started to go over where we lost 8 out of 10 and really tested the system as we uh, spoke about many times and I said that, um, to um, establish the team to that summer 2019 where we, it was a big turnaround, we, we sold Neil, uh, Romain Sawyers, uh, Dan Bentley, three key members of the, the squad the last three years, or two years, three years, something like that. Um, rebuild it with uh, Christian Argaard, Pont Jansson, Ethan Pinnock, uh, Matthias Jensen. David. David, yeah, that mm -hmm. summer as well, yeah. Uh, going into the season, we were actually not a striker. We knew that Oli could be a good, but, and then start a little bit slow. Then I think it was, I think it was the Swansea game away, we were winning 3 0, where I thought, okay. You know, we, we got a chance this year, just knew instantly. And before the season, still thought, okay, top six is possible with this quality squad, if we can get a click. Uh, yeah. And then over Christmas, uh, I clearly remember a big game against Fulham, where we're winning 1 0, where we destroyed them at home. Um, and then we have a bad spell in January, February, where we, you know, struggle a bit, winning then against uh, Sheffield Wednesday at home, 5 0, yeah. which was the final uh, game at Griffin Park, yeah. which was. Yeah, very nice to, to, to remember now that if, if there was a final game, then there was not a bad one. Um, going into um, to lockdown, first lockdown, uh, where we start in June and we know that, okay, we are 10 points after West Brom. Uh, that's a f and nine games to go, but we are facing Fulham, West Brom, uh, and I can't remember who we were facing the third one. Winning way to Fulham 2-0, West Brom home 1-0, <laughs> uh, and then I just knew, okay, this is game on. Uh, we have a chance. Then f winning the following five, and then at the training ground before we go to Stoke, we are meeting in late. Uh, we are watching uh, on the phone Huddersfield West Brom. Yeah. Huddersfield going up one nil. Players are jumping and celebrating. <laughs> Air West Brom are equalising. Okay, on the two buses, and then we are driving up there, and then Huddersfield scoring in 80 something minute, and both buses go crazy from the players jumping around. We're arriving in the hotel around, around 10 o'clock and I think, okay, we need to meet, we need to do something. And then I just said, okay, we've got an opportunity, make sure we do everything like normal, you know, but we play the next day, 12.30. Such a short, short turnaround to keep emotions and suddenly from chasing to suddenly, whoa, we can do it. Yeah. Um, and people are saying we bottle it. I'm, I'm always hating that uh, mental, we didn't bottle it. Yes, two or three players, four maybe, didn't perform the best because the first time they were in a game like this. But if you look at it as a neutral, this game we would have got a point or won it six out of seven times, and a point would have been enough to go into the final game in a different place. Yeah. Mm. We lost 1-0, playing against Barnsley, 
that came with everything, <laughs> going down 1-0, equalizing, just a silver, wonderful goal, and we are chasing. And we get two big chances, miss them, they go down the other end of the score, and then we found out, I, I knew, but the players found out because they couldn't know when they played, yeah. that we drew, uh, oh sorry, so, yeah, uh, West, uh, Brom. West Brom drew with um, QPR. Emotions in the dressing room, crazy high. Um, I, I think it's the first time I really had to shout and make sure everyone was calm. And then I said to them, we've still got an unbelievable chance uh, this year, so make sure we go home. Still get two days off because I think that was, that was it, they needed that. Um, going into the semi final against Swansea, losing 1 0, brick or red card, you know, <laughs> and it got overturned yeah. for the second leg. Winning at home, destroyed 20. Going into the final in that ghost stadium of Wembley, there was 50, uh, not even fans, but you know, 25 people, yeah. people or something like that for, from each club. Losing a game that was nil nil, uh, it was a nil nil game. Both teams didn't do top. Uh, by a mistake by David, the best keeper, I, I would say, in the championship that year. Um, and then uh, coming back 10 days later, no holiday, uh, more or less, uh, for me, the players, um, ah, crazy, I had to go again, maybe it was good, maybe we had something to think about, instead of, you know, feeling too sorry about ourselves, so we just had to go back to it, going into the most crazy season of them all, playing Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, so when we face Tottenham in January, we are the club across Europe that played the most games ever, little, at Brentford, a bust up in Hounslow, <laughs> playing more games than Barcelona, Real Madrid, Liverpool, Man City, Man United, and we were chasing. Lost the semi final, 21 games unbeaten, went on top of the championship <laughs> against the uh, Reading away, yeah. losing three in a row, injuries, and I thought, did it? Well, he just did it. I, I thought that uh, <laughs> this it we, we can't make it the the, the um, uh, direct promotion. Yeah. No, I knew there was 12 games to go. It's just we lost injuries. We lacked the momentum. Watford and Norwich won, had momentum. So of course, after a good night's sleep, we went again and sent 24 points in the last 12. Then we do it. Convinced we do it. We got 24 points in the last 12. It was not enough. So it was a little bit, okay, another playoff final, uh, uh, playoff yeah, games. Losing 1-0 to uh, Bournemouth away. Um, in a game where we deserved at least a draw, mm. uh, I think. Uh, crucial moment for me that game. They had a corner, 88 minute, 89 minute, uh, and they kept everyone back and, and played it short. And I just knew, oh, they're afraid of us, yes. you know. <laughs> Uh, one game to go. It's not like they have won the semi-finals by this. So I went straight into the players and said to them, you know, uh, they're afraid of us, they're fierce. Uh, you know, they, they don't take a corner like this if they're not fierce. Yeah. Um, and then the second uh, semi-final, everything was planned, tactics, speeches, everything, you know, bang on. Uh, I remember I did this lap. Uh, but that was so important because you got everyone going. I yeah. know there was only 4,000 there or yeah. so, but that atmosphere was one of the best I'd ever heard. Uh, I, I agree. I think, I think the fans have been fantastic. You guys have been fantastic the whole season. But it seems like, maybe it's because remember it, that the, it was more intense in some way, uh, 4,000 that, that, that day. Um, and then I made the final speech in the, in the dressing room. I'm not a big believer of that and I'm not, I'm okay. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the best at it. Uh, okay, but not, you know, mm. I really need to be in the, in the. So, but in this one, I prepared, of course. So we did instead of sitting down, we did a huddle. I stood in the middle, so on purpose, and I said, uh, we need coolness. And then I pointed at Pontus and then Sergi, because they are a little bit emotional. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, uh, we need aggressivity. And then I pointed at Matthias Jensen, and he was, by the way, what a game he played yeah. that game. Now, anyway, Ethan Pinnock, uh, kind of, so those guys. Uh, and then I said, I need presence. And then I pointed at Ivan. Um, Dalsgaard and Emiliano and so that, that was it and then I stood back because Norgaard wanted to, to, to speak as well because he was injured in the warm-up and then he said guys we are family play for each other like you play for your mom 
your sister, your brother, your children, your family. And I, I get goosebumps now because I remember mm. it. So the staff, we were because we are old, okay? So a little T in our eyes and the players, <laughs> they were just <laughs> crazy, ready to go. Went out there, destroyed Bournemouth for five minutes, <laughs> then they scored. <laughs> <laughs> and then you of all people kicked yeah, the bin. Yeah, yeah, I kicked the bin, <laughs> so the I same. smashed the bin. I said, Thomas, no, stay cool, stay cool. <laughs> and then I stayed cool for 10 seconds, smashed the bin again. <laughs> and I said, no, no, be cool. And then, yeah, the rest is history because we got the red card. No, sorry, penalty, red card. Yeah. Half time, I changed, marked on the pitch. Sergi, uh, a wing, Brian, a wing back, went for it, and we won 3 1. And that was, uh, for me, that was the standout game. After that game, I knew, with all due respect to Swansea, I just knew that if we perform top, they perform top. We were a better team. That's an unbelievable feeling to go into the game with. Yeah. Um, and now we are in Premier League again. <laughs> so well, now I need a sip. Well, on those, uh, <laughs> you know, cheers. cheers to that, everyone. Cheers, uh, yeah. cheers that. <laughs> so, oh, Emily, you said that you knew that if we performed to our, to our top level, were you nervous at all on the day? Uh, as a fan, which I one? Was, uh, uh, the playoff final. Oh, yeah. Crazy nervous. Yeah. Um, but then how do you, because as a manager, surely you don't want the squad to pick up on that? No, I, there is obviously a hurricane inside me uh, and your body is painful. Um, those two, I remember, I think I felt that three times, obviously the two player finals. And then when I was a head coach for the under 17 national team coach, um, when he we went to um, European uh, qualifiers in Greece with the, under, with the 94s, which was Christian Argaard, by the way. Right. Uh, and I knew we were the best team, and we had a chance to qualify for the Euros, with Den which Denmark haven't done in nine years. And it was a special group I had. Um, and those six days, I felt, you know, because it was not it was just my own. No one, there was no pressure. Just my own, because I just badly wanted it. Yeah. And I really was lying down in my bed, bed and thinking, if it was like this to be a you know a top manager, <laughs> then, I, then I don't want to do, <laughs> don't it. do it. No, I don't want to do it. <laughs> So the good thing in all the other years, no, of course there's a little bit of nerve in any, before any game, but those two games, because there's so much on stake, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's defining for all of us if you go to the Premier League or not. So uh, try to keep your nerve, you know, try to be calm, uh, smile, you know, all that. Um, well, I think there's that great, great shot when they're going down the line and you do the little yeah. look to the camera. Yeah. It's, I don't know if you've seen it. It's like a no. really iconic moment. So the camera's going along and you do a little smile yeah. to the camera. I don't know, like... You look relaxed. Yeah, that's you it. That's why I asked. Because that you yeah. seem like you're just like enjoying it and yeah. it's like, this is, this is my, my stage. Yeah. Before we kind of go on to, the, to the, the Premier League season and stuff, you mentioned 2019, it kind of, there was a bit of change in, in the signings. We brought in a lot of people that are still here now and have had a huge influence on this squad. Nasi, for you as a fan, I remember the first time we kind of got linked with Pontus mm. and I was like, this feels a bit different now. This is a player that's kind of one of the best in the league. He's got a, an amazing reputation. And I was like, wow, we're in this ballpark now. We're, we're not saying we weren't giving it a go before, but it seemed like a real statement signing. Mm. How did you feel at that point? Exactly like that. Exactly like that. It sort of felt like he was elevating. It was elevating Brentford. It was a an experienced head that we perhaps hadn't had in the squad before. Um, and yeah, it was a coup. It was a real coup to know we were bringing in a, a captain of a, well, a player from another side that had been such a hero to that side as well. So for him to want to come to Brentford was massive in itself. And then then we sign him. It was just. Oh yeah, as a fan, you just felt like, oh, we're going. This is all going in the right direction, yeah. as it has been for a number of years at Brentford. But it just felt like this is just another step on the way to achieving that hopeful goal of promotion. Reese, Re as a former player, what, what would you be like in that change room when you you see like, oh, Pontus Janssen might might be joining this squad? What would it do for you in the, in that summer? I think what you, you said shit, it, it raises standards, doesn't it? So you know, when you look at you look at leaders and captains, they can have. You know, several ways of impacting a game or a season and, and Pontus for me seems like somebody that's a, a quite a natural leader um, and again for, for younger players, for players that may be lacking a little bit of confidence to see someone of his stature coming into the club at that stage it's a, it's a statement and, and yeah. again you know I think he's epitomised that since he's been here and, and no more so than this year I think he's yeah. been incredible throughout the course of this season uh, and, and some players lead by the way to communicate, some players lead by the performances. He does a, a bit of both and you know, Thomas will probably know better than I what he's like behind the scenes but you know, he, he's, he certainly seems to have given 
everyone a lift and you know you talk about raising standards it's not just about you know on the field it's about you know, timekeeping it's about how you turn up to training you know the way you train all those kind of elements and he seems that kind of person that would, that would that lift everyone around the place and again you know he's you know a well worthy leader of, of what's been a great group of players for, for the last few years Thomas, what was your opinion of him before he joined because he was a kind of a lo- people loved to hate Pontus before I remember when he was at Leeds and he, he was kind of the pantomime villain a lot of times when he went there and obviously you've gone up against him that season before so what, what were kind of your thoughts on him before he joined the club before he was even linked with us um, just a little bit to, um, to answer Reese and um, Natalie uh, I think it was a statement I agree and I think a nice little story to add is that I remember clearly when he then arrived in the preseason camp when it was a, f- uh, a fact because there were some rumours <laughs> yeah. that Justin Silva went to Peter Killam, Peter, we're going up, we're going to the Premier League. <laughs> so that was just the, the, the excitement among the yeah. players that this was really, you know, a top player yeah. and, and, uh, and a character and a leader that could ele- elevate the, the group um, and, and he's been, been fantastic and I agree with you Reese. I think actually that this year um, this has been his best season and I told him uh, a couple of days ago that this year of the three seasons I think this has been the best mm. and that is at the highest stage um, which is um, yeah, very impressive. Yeah. Mm. Um, of course I knew him but I didn't knew him you know yeah. uh, just a little bit look from the outside um, of course uh, we were told that his, his punt was difficult to manage and, uh, and I always have that um, uh, view on it that I don't think players are difficult to manage if they play every game <laughs> uh, unless they're really special or difficult character yeah. th- and, and then we don't want them because no yeah. so very simple uh, and, 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 and Pontus is a wonderful person and a wonderful wonderful character um, so um, I think it's been easy you know yeah. uh, I think it's a, it's a relationship that works bo- both ways that, that you know I'm not um, of course, I know I'm a big authority in terms of I take the decisions in the end, and I pick the team, and I, you know, will if he's not performing, you'll get out of the team uh, one day. Of course, yeah. that, that that's that's my job to do that. But but in generally, the way I lead is a communication, and it goes a little bit both ways, and especially with with the leadership group, and he's part of them, and of course he's obviously the captain, but, but those guys I'm, I'm very close with. I think that, that for me was the biggest surprise of Pontus. I, again, I, I had this image of him from watching him playing for Leeds. I thought he was quite brash, quite loud, and when I've been at the training ground, he's actually so like humble and like so unassumingly confident. He's, he's not in your face, he's not... Mm. I, w- I was so surprised, he's very soft, he's very like relaxed, and I had this mi- complete misconception of him before I met him. Um, and I think the other thing, I, did you have an idea that he would work so well with Christian, having worked with Christian before? Because those two together seem to be such a massive part of everything mm. we do as well, playing side. And mm. the way they, I imagine it makes yourself Brian and Kevin's job a lot easier because, mm. I don't know, it seems like they're, they're such good influences on the change room. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, no doubt that it. Um I didn't know. I knew you knew that Christian was um, a leader as well, um, and um, a, a, yeah, a strong character, a natural leader skill set. Uh, because I knew him very well. Yeah. Um, so I just think the more good characters and leaders you can get into the, the squad, the better, uh, the better chance of success. And with with Christian in there, Pontus in there, Dalskar in there. Uh, and then the, fi- the last season, you know, Ivan, I think, and David, you know, then you get big characters that can yeah, that can push the team. Um, but uh, yeah, now they got a real close relationship, and you know, become friends, the family see each other. I think that all those small bits that that matters, you know, mm. you, you know that uh, players are just running a little bit more through a brick wall for each other if there is a strong bond. And in general, the whole whole group is very close. Did you have that match, Reese? Like here in what Christian said before that playoff game, we're a family and stuff. Is that something that, kind of as a fan, you just expect every club's like that? Is every changing room like that? No, it's really? not. It's, it's actually quite unique. Because you, know, you talk about, you hear about cliques and you know, dressing room divides and the rest of it. I've been quite fortunate to, to be in some decent dressing rooms, but it takes one or two individuals to really upset that. Uh, but when you've got buy-in, I think that's key. Because you know, sometimes you can put yourself up as a, as a designated leader and 
if half the team aren't buying into what you're saying, it's just hot air. You know, people can talk rhetoric, cliches, the rest of it. But you know, when you've got a captain and a leadership group and people that people are buying into, they enjoy spending time together. You know, not running away from the training gun at the first opportunity. They, you know, they're, they're there and enjoying the work and enjoying each other's company. That's invaluable because that's what breeds team spirit. And you know, they're they're, they're the details that make the, the biggest difference. You know, you, you can match up eleven v eleven, but if you know within your squad, not just the team, within your squad, you've got people that are, are, are invested. It make it makes well, in the, my experience, it makes managers' jobs easier because you know that you haven't got. You know, five or six players that are chirping away in the background, how, how, how uncomfortable they are, how unhappy they are about not being involved in the rest of it, and that's what ma- that's what makes a difference. The, the good teams and the great teams is that is that those extra elements around togetherness and, and being invested in what's going on. And I think from what we've seen, from what I've seen, we have that abundance here, so it's great. It's great to see. I think naturally we should, we should move on to this season because. <laughs> It's been an unbelievable ride this year. It's been okay. <laughs> it's been okay. <laughs> that's the perfectionist. That's, that's driving the standards. I asked you this at the awards. How, how do you feel sat here as, as the head coach of, of this club right now? Because it's been... Some people will say we've surpassed expectations, but I know as a club we'll probably say, actually, maybe not so much. Yeah, maybe not so much. Um, but... I think in many ways we are very special and we do things differently. Um, so if it was any other club that was in our position, all would have said definitely we surpassed the expectations. Before the season I had an unbelievable belief in these players um, that we could do a, a fantastic job. Uh, because I know one, I know more know them personally of course, I know the culture we have built together. Um, and that's a strong, you know, strong, strong foundation. Um, uh, obviously, we, we, you know, look into stats, and um, I would say the view I had of the league and the other teams, without knowing all of them, and the, the way we performed also in the cup run uh, the year before, and I just thought, hmm, you know, the, the difference between us and uh, the other teams are not that, not that big, and also by by the fact that. The difference between, let's say, the bottom six in Premier League and the top six in Championship, no, it's so small. Um, yeah. So, so it's not much you need to do. Not much. It's very hard work, <laughs> but you know, it's not much over a season that will be the difference between 20th or uh, uh, 15 or 14th. Yeah. I think going into the final game of the season and us have a good chance of finish 10th or still disappointed they didn't finish 11. That is more that we could dream about. I think if we finished, and it's not about the finish, if we finished 15, 16, 15, let's say 15, I think that was might be where we, where we thought we, we could be if we performed, we never know. Yeah. Um, but we want to do th- things differently. You know, again, zero, zero experience uh, from the players, zero exper- experience from the, from the leaders of the club, uh, head coach, staff. But for me, it's about knowledge, um, it's about work, work, work ethic, and a good plan. And you have that, of course, respect the culture, respect the different leagues, all that. If you do that, then I can't see why you can't have success. I'm not saying it's easy. And I'm not saying you can just do it again. We just had that big belief. And the last week going into the Arsenal game, I constantly talked about the need to be brave. And I just said that <laughs> I had this feeling that I would be disappointed if we don't beat Arsenal. That was what I said to the players. I think most Constant. Arsenal fans would agree with you on that. <laughs> <as well. Yeah. laughs> uh, so I said that through the week and before the game. And of course, we, I know we were going to play, the, play a world-class team. But yeah, we, we, that, was, that, was a, that was a kick-off. Of course, after the first seven games, I think, I can't remember where we were on the table. But we performed well. At that stage, I thought, hmm, top 10. Can, can, can we do top 10? That, that, that was my, uh, my feeling. Because looking at the performance, we were not just crawling all the line mm. to win against these teams. We did well. But then injury hit us, uh, and that's the, that's the big thing. Did you, did you say to the lads, we need to make sure we have a, have a good start? Or any, was there anything, any discussions or things like that? Was it, we need to start I, the I, season well? I, I think I'll tell them next year to start well again. It's a little bit easier. <laughs> 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 but did you, did you set any like, points targets or anything? No. Go, right, by no. first month we need... No. So no. you followed us the whole season. What did I say? before each game or after each game. One game at a time. Yeah. And finish as high as, uh, as, yeah. as possible. Completely transparent. Right. Same message to the players. 
same message uh, to the public or to everyone else. That's the focus, massive focus on the next training, ma massive focus on the next game. Um, so, um, yeah, no, no point targets, no. Uh, the first, I think, as I said before, 24 points was the only time in the close to four years I've been here as a head coach I set up a point target. Yeah, and look, a word that gets bound around for teams that are in their second season is second season syndrome. Have, have that, has that been discussed? Has anyone mentioned that? And I looked at it, it's actually a bit of a, bit of a myth, really. We were, we were discussing it earlier. How do you approach this second season? Um, definitely not, not, not the same as the first, because now we've got a, an experience that we maybe can use in hopefully to, to add another layer. Um, I, I think it's a narrative. I don't believe in that no. narrative. Um, I respect massively this league. It's relentless. Look what happened to Leeds uh, after a fantastic first season. Then they struggled and could get relegated in the last game of the season. Sheffield United, obviously. Uh, Huddersfield, there's a lot. But if you look over the, over the last 11 years, it's not that many no. who, who struggled because they neither just got down the first year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so, I look at our performances. It's not lucky that we, we were we are staying where we are staying. It's with the performances. Um, if we keep the squad, which is the plan, uh, and we control all of the players except you know one player that you, you may be going to ask me about. <laughs> um, uh, you brought him up. I wasn't going to say anything. Who are we talking about now? Uh, and um, if we can add a, a few players, which of course you all you know that you follow the clubs for, for years, we try to add a few players with, with quality. Um, if that's going to happen, why shouldn't we be able to, play, to perform at least at the same level and with no injuries, maybe a little bit higher, but, big but, this is relentless league, so we can be everything between 20th and 7th. But I'm positive uh, as a person, <laughs> so why not go for a, a higher position? Can I ask you about yourself then, um, in terms of what you, how you felt you've dealt with the Premier League this season? Have you changed in any way, do you think, or are you still very much the same? Thomas Frank that took over when you did? Um, I think the core of me is very much the same in, in many ways. Um, I say that to a lot of people. Not to, yeah, my wife, she'll kill me, so that's very easy. That uh, <laughs> If I ever change, uh, she will let me know. She's, <laughs> my, she's not interested in football. And uh, she went to the Leeds game. That was the only second game this season. And the first one she went to was, was the Liverpool game. And that was only because our good friend Casper uh, Juhlmann, uh, the Danish national team yeah. coach, uh, said to her, "Nana, you can go to that game because <laughs> it's, you know, uh, uh, because she's you know um, she's not watching the games because all the expectations and so on." And then she he said, "But even if they lose three 0 there'll still be a win." And then she said, "Okay, okay, I go to that game." And then uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it was obviously yeah, a pretty good game. So no, uh, so I try really be aware of not just being myself. Um, so what you see is what you get. Um, uh, but in terms of as a as a football coach, I, I I learn every season. Of course, I I know that from my start as a head coach to now, I'm I'm better, I'm more experienced, I'm sharper in, in decision making, in, in planning, in, in everything. Uh, but you know, it's like I always try to use that analogy that like a, like a runner. You, you run it at a good pace, so you, you know. But if you want to to run a bit bit faster, the last ten percent is really so difficult, mm -hmm. you know, really. So I'm up there. It's the it's the last five ten percent that is so difficult to get better. It's you know every day a little bit. Um, have I learned anything? It's harder to be in the Premier League <laughs> because you're losing more games, mm. and losing is killing me. And it's hard to take, even that you, ah, you played well at Etihad and you know, it's the best team in the world, City. Yes, but at least they lost. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and that's harder, because the last two years we won a lot of games. So even that you won, and you're not, you know, sitting back and drinking four bottles of red, and you no, know, no, because are you happy until next you try to achieve something, but it just gives you that little treat of you succeeded a tiny bit. Yeah. So even that the performance at Etihad against City was, for me, a defensive masterpiece. I think we did unbelievable with five players out, unbelievable. Uh, then, of course, I take that in, but the pain is still bigger because we lose. Mm. So that's definitely the hardest bit.
What about, and then all this media. I was about to get to this because. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you don't mean us. <laughs> <laughs> but, but seriously, uh, this is a good part, of course. Yeah, have an appointment with us. But not, not just with the media, now everything you say is mm. scrutinised a lot more. Mm. It, do you find that hard? Because, and not even just what you say, what we do. So every week you'll have pundits discussing the way you've set up a team. I know that we could put a video out and one person can say one thing and I lose my head and I'm just thinking about that the whole time. Yeah. But this is on a different level. So how do you cope with that, with pundits discussing, oh, I don't know why they've set up this way, I don't know why they've defended like that. Do you find, has that been hard for you? Um, or, or do you think you're quite good at blocking that stuff out? I think I'm pretty good at it. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm... Uh, of course I got an ego. Of course, we all do. Yeah. Mm. But I don't know everyone inside out, uh, other football managers. Um, but I'm, I'm I think I'm pretty good to be relaxed about my job. Yeah. Um, of course, I want to be the best version of myself. Of course, I also want to do better, and I have that mind, uh, get that thought in. I want to be a little bit better than this guy. You know, uh, of course. But I think I'm pretty relaxed about it. I know my values. What yeah. is the most important thing? But of course, again, I got an ego, so I also get annoyed if someone is criticizing something where, of course, they can get to me. I think a big thing, I'm not on social media. Yeah. I think yeah, there's, a, I, I don't know, I, you know, I don't understand why I, it's part of your job. Yeah. So, but, but, you know, if people are criticizing you, no matter how good you are, you think, ah, one stupid person, <laughs> still get that little stick yeah, or that yeah. little, uh, and the more you get of these, so even that you're strong, if you constantly do it the same spot, you'll get a little bit more weak, and suddenly, you know, there'll be a hole. Uh, so, I don't understand why people are doing that, going to social media. I'm not reading too much. Uh, of course, I'm updating my, myself about the latest news a bit, but if it's after a game, for example, if you lose a game, I barely read anything, because I'm probably the guy who knows the best about this team. I hope so. If not, then someone in my staff. Yeah. So all these so-called experts, and I can say that because I've been a pundit myself, I've been a commentator myself, and I've been a coach myself. So some of them are very, very clever, you know, and some of them have never been a coach before. They may have been a player before. I said it with the biggest respect yeah. because there's different approaches. So I've never been a player, so I don't know how it really, really feels to sit in there. I don't know that. So there's something I don't know. I just think people need to be aware of that. Then plus they are paid. <laughs> yeah. so some of them are paid without me naming any, putting any names out there. And some of them are picked and paid a lot of money to be very critical. So that's part of their job. Yeah. So um, what would I say with that? Yeah, when you win, I read. Reinforcement, you know, positive. Uh, try to follow. When we lose, I'm not reading too much. Can I, can I just say we're not all bad? <laughs> <laughs> Working in the media. Just so no, there's a lot of good ones. And I'm not against critic um, if it's, um, what's the word? If it's um, not well rounded, it can be very harsh. But if that person also, when we do good, are very positive, you know, if that's, you know, level, consistent level, so they are hard when they have to be hard and good when they have to be good, mm -hmm. instead, and they are, I think, in that framework. Because where it should be, then there's some who's going there, or some who's going down there. That's where. All they this week is this, or this week is this. I think. Uh, what's mm. this? So yeah. yeah. Well, the, um, so I, I'm not doing too much about it, but if I know someone, I just put a personal note. Yeah, well, I think I need to take a, a leaf out of your book. I think. Mm. Um, no, I know you're a very busy man. You've got somewhere to be later this evening, so we're going to do some fan questions. If yeah. that's all right with you, and hopefully these will kind of look back at the at the season as a whole. Um, Tom Med wants to know, have you got a favourite away game from the season? From this season? Yeah. Oh yeah, it must be Chelsea of course. Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I just thought, ooh, how could we get that one? <laughs> <laughs> that was the same now, for me. I, I think I said it after, but um, every week we work so hard to prepare the team and the boys to, to perform and, and do, a, do a top job. Um, uh, and sometimes you do everything you can, we perform well, we lose. And sometimes you do everything you can, we perform bad, we lose, you know. Mm -hmm. But everything was planned, follow the game plan to perfection. Um, we won. Fair and square. 
against that top side that came full strength at their ground. Yeah. It's almost, you know, you never take those boxes, all of them, never. That happened that day. Yeah. And that, 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 that's why that will always be a, a special game. I mean, this might be the same answer. Um, Finn Noah Chester wants to know, what do you think was our best team performance? Yeah, it's, 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 it's similar. Um, yeah. I've mentioned the West Ham game home. Mm. I think that's that was the, the, that's yeah. the same. Yeah, because we controlled it from, from beginning to the end of the game. It was, it, was, it, was, as, it was a routine home performance against a top side. Yeah. That was, I think that for, that for me was the one that stood out as the kind of, all right, this is, this is, there's, no, there's no luck about this whatsoever. This is a good team yeah. that's outplayed West Ham, yeah. fair and square, with yeah. no drama, no issue whatsoever. Yeah. And it was, yeah. that, that, that was that, you know, obviously Chelsea away was fantastic. Yeah. You got the, the highs and lows of, of the other games, you know, Chelsea at home, we battered Chelsea, yeah. Liverpool at home, obviously. But West Ham was the kind of one for me that was like, yeah. I agree. Like this yeah. proper, I think proper performance. Completely agree. I think as a Liverpool, of course, fantastic. Mm. We gave away too many chances against them, but uh, mm. still a fantastic mm. game. Yeah. Um, little Phil wants to know, did anything surprise you this season? Hmm. Ponto scoring? Huh? Ponto scoring? <laughs> <laughs> that surprised me. I said to him, it's about time that he started <laughs> to score some set piece goals for us. He yeah. waited three seasons to do that. <laughs> But no, big credit to him. He he done he done well um, yeah. this season. Um, I think it's because I'm not, you know, match of the day. I think I watched it four times before this season. Yeah. Uh, of course, I know about the program. It's uh, iconic, and it's just you know, it's Saturday night. Either I'm with friends or it's uh, after my bedtime. Or, you know, I'm <laughs> tired or whatever. Um, and this season, I watched it four times. Um, so it's just, and I'm not on social media, so I'm aware, of course, I know the numbers about it's going out to millions of millions, but I think it's maybe surprised me how big Premier League is. Yeah. I think, you know, how big it is and how much more you get recognised and... Uh, I was going to say, has your life changed because of it? Uh, a tiny bit, a tiny bit. And I'm thinking, how is it to be one of the top dogs, you know? Uh, club or Guardiola or Tuchel, you know. Yeah. And I still, you know, I like to go for a drink and, you know, <laughs> with my friends or something like that. You just need to be aware. Yeah. Uh, you can't, of course. Uh, it was uh, behaved anyway. But so, no, no, yeah, yeah, but, you know, yeah, I'm just, I'm just surprised how, you know, we, we went, went skiing, went to after ski place, or what do you call it? You call it not called after ski, you call it... Uh, a ski. A uh, and I got recognised of ten people, like fantastic live band, and you know I got shots and beers and everything, fantastic. <laughs> but I was just a little bit, mm, just took the top of it. Um, I'm good at partying, but uh, <laughs> I'm just a, a little bit aware of public, mm, That's because also with me, I will not do anything stupid. You know, I'm 48, I've done my bits, uh, but uh, <laughs> so it's just. You, you, with cameras these days, yeah. even if they do, you know, whatever, sing, you know, everything, then you just, that's, that can little be, hmm. yeah, yeah. So, private parties. <laughs> <laughs> um, Amelia Christina, which player has improved the most this season, would you say? I mean, I think there's quite a few candidates, mm. really. Oh, that's a tough one. I think what is, the, also, I think that's, Linked with the overall team performance, um, how well performed, I think a lot of the players have performed to a 7, 8 out of 10 throughout the season. Of course, a little bit ups and downs, but you know, John performed very well. I think I will, I think the one of the most consistent, and you, you know, you, we, we barely mention him, Ethan Pinnock. Yes. Yeah. I think he's our rock. Um, uh, you know, I said to, you know, Pontus have performed, maybe his bet has been really good, but I think he, and he got a lot of praise and all that, but Ethan, he is our, he's our rock. He, he, by the way, still needs to score more on Sydney, <laughs> I told him that. But he's another one that's, that took to life with us yeah. straight away, pretty yeah. quickly, and yeah. then, yeah, I, I completely agree. I think both him and Pontus have been brilliant, actually. Yeah, I love, I love his journey, and I, yeah. I, I agree. I, I, may, I may have said it in a previous show, just ran it out there. But he's, <laughs> but he's been, he's just show, he's, his development's been... Yeah. Yeah incredible and, and to perform at this level like he's been there his entire career mm. 
That's, that's, that's the biggest mark of respect I think yeah. you can give him because he's, and he's got more to give, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think a lot of the players, and I think that's the big thing to all of the players, a lot of them it seems like, okay, have they played Premier League for five seasons or something? Yeah. Like yeah. Um, and, and still there's a lot of players that still, I think, can improve. And look, this isn't actually a question on here, but it feels remiss of us not to mention Christian Eriksen and the impact he's had. Again, we see it mainly on the pitch, but what has he brought since his arrival in January to the, to the group and, and just around the place as well? Um, first, I think that um, a lot of people are saying that, OK, we didn't have Eriksen. He was uh, you know, in, in, instrumental for, for us getting on that good run and you know, get a little bit away of that relegation zone. I think, yes, he deserves credit. He's been fantastic for us. But I think the main, two main bits has been our, in general, consistent performance throughout the season. So even the bad spell of results, we performed quite good in yeah. a lot of the games. And we just carried that on. You can't you know, go from a lot of bad results and suddenly get good results if the underlying metrics and, and, and performance are, uh, are not there. So we consistently performed well. So we just carried that on and then just turned the small margins to, to our favor. Secondly, all our key players were fit. So David back, Ivan back after being out four or five games, um, Rico back, uh, you know, Christopher back. So these players that have been out, that's key, key players for us, fit and ready. Um, and then, of course, added with Christian's quality, um, lifted um, us to a, a, you know, a top run of games, the last 11. And oh, sorry, then outside the pitch, calmness, um, Fantastic, but you know, fit, you know, as I say to him, you know, try to uh, seduce him a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, I didn't have to ask I the I question. I, 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 maybe, you know, I'll do everything I can, you know, I, I kiss and hocking with him and then show him. He's one of the no. favourites in your phone <laughs> list, isn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Just send him a heart every day. <laughs> uh, no, so he. Uh, um, how is it? We fit him, but he fit us. Yeah. It's both. So, so we also fit him. I think it's very, very important. So he's done fantastic, but also think we've done a lot of good for him, which he knows. Uh, and of course, he can perform. He performed in you know Tottenham, Inter, two of the biggest clubs mm -hmm. in the world, and, and uh, he's a uh, the superstar of the Danish national team. Uh, so we are not on that level in comparison, but yeah. the, the way we are as a club fit him. I always speak about attitude, confident but humble. That's Christian. Yeah. Mm. Walk in, not, not, I can't do that walking or whatever you do when you uh, got confident, but you know, just, you can just feel confident but humble. Yeah, I think that's something that really stuck out for me when I saw him arrive and obviously he's, he's a superstar, he's, he's a world-class footballer, so I think again, a common misconception is he could have walked in with an ego, mm. yeah. yet there wasn't a member of staff or a player that he wasn't sitting with and for, for, for example, like anyone from the B team that was up, he was sitting with them and it, it, it just, I don't know, I just thought it, it, he was just world class around the place as well, this season as well. Um, Keep sending the hearts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. um, before I go on to the last one, have you guys got any, anything you'd Oh, gosh. Um, I would say, who do you think has, has kind of come from left field this season from a playing perspective? Anyone that you may not have been sure about with their ability to, to adapt to the Premier League? Is there anybody within the squad that's, that's kind of taken you by surprise a wee bit? Mm. Ooh, that's a really difficult question, mm. but yeah, it's interesting from, from a personal perspective because you look, at, you look at players that play in the Championship, we all believe that we can play at the highest level, but in reality it doesn't always manifest yeah. itself as such. Well, as well, Pontus said it, didn't yeah, he, on the awards night about having imposter syndrome and not yeah. thinking you can make that. Step up, see the um, players' questions. No, no, yeah, but they think about. It. I think that's very uh, human yeah. uh, thinking or behaviour uh, that they have that thought. Um, um, yeah, I think it's uh, David. Not that he couldn't perform Premier League. I was just, I knew he would be good, but he was yeah, that good. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I knew he was a Premier League keeper. No, no doubt about that. But he just took it to another level. He suited the Premier League, you know. He, he, I think I'm he's so relieved you said that, by the way. What, that's, that's a great answer. That's, that's, that's spared me, that's spared me a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> a top player being even better is better than saying, actually, I yeah, didn't yeah. really rate him, but he's been decent. I, I didn't worry <laughs> when you started talking, to be honest. I was like, where's this all going? I know, you're all going to say. It's Pride, I think. He's 45 on the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was, what I was going to ask, 
actually just came to me. Um, it, I know it didn't matter in terms of the result in the end because we won the game, but the night of the Everton game at Goodison, one, I know we spoke about it before, but the atmosphere at Goodison was amazing for that first 20 minutes. But I want to know about the fireworks and everything else and how that how it all played out and how you all felt. Were you prepared for it? Were you aware yeah. you, you yeah. knew it was going to happen? We, we, we not knew, but we definitely expected it. So we had more security guys. Uh, the police was aware. Um, to, be, to, to be fair, what we have to, been told, um, the Everton fans did a good job. You know, <laughs> so they uh, they booked a room in four different hotels uh -huh. uh, that they expect us to be in. So they had cars, you know, room keys uh, to. Uh, uh, to, to come into the hotel, so they made this fantastic firework, very, very beautiful actually, <laughs> yeah. uh, outside the hotel, uh, and then they uh, they throw these alarms or whatever, some I can't remember the name, but something that could be very noisy that the security guys were jumping all over and, 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 and stamping on, and so so they did it well, I think, but in a way I was a little bit disappointed. If it was me, really want to do it, I would do it one o'clock, two o'clock, <laughs> three o'clock, four o'clock. <laughs> Oh, it's just don't like give them yeah. Ideas. Now we know what could happen next year when we go to get a sin, don't we? <laughs> when they came here, come here. Oh, oh yeah. I'll pass it now. Yeah. I know. You'll be out there. Yeah, yeah. Yourself. Amazing. And the final question that I know we said this again at the awards. You've got such an incredible relationship with the supporters. Vin Yogden just want to say, describe that relationship that you've got with the fans. Um. And have you got a final message for them? Maybe at the end of an incredible season. No, I think. I think they've I think they've been fantastic um, the, the whole season. I think obviously a new experience for all of us, and and you can see they they flourish and uh, and really enjoy it. I think the away trip uh, away trips. Uh, I've been a, a football fan myself, and also travelled to to games when I was younger. It, it's a special feeling, um, and you go there really with your with your pack, with your group, with your team, uh, and uh, you try to cheer them forward. And I think the Brentford fans have been fantastic uh, and very loud. As I said before, the Anfield, I think, was uh, maybe the best home ground or yeah. most difficult away ground. I think they were a little bit flat that game. Maybe it was because we were coming. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, it did make you think it was a bit of a myth. The Anfield. Uh, no, I know. It's no, it was, it was quiet. Yeah, it was, it was quiet. Yeah, was but uh, no, it's not quiet because we heard the Bees fans. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> and there's many other away games where they've been fantastic. At home, I think we are starting to uh, a fortress. So, I really love the, the special memories we, we created together, um, and I want to create more. Uh, I want more. And I, as I said, in the, after the after the game, I, I, I'm convinced. I'm positive. We'll come back stronger. We need to do better. And, and they need to do better. We need to. We have performed seven out of ten, eight out of ten. I think uh, as a team, as a club, eight out of ten, eight out of ten, eight out of ten, quite good. Uh, <laughs> but there's more, more to go. And I think we can make this because of the stadium, because of the fans, because of us. I think we can make our home ground one of the most, no, the most difficult place to come to. Thomas, thanks so much for your time, and um, here's to another great season next year. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.